Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. So today's clip is going to focus on the DJI Intelligent Flight Battery Systems that come with your drone. And I've got a Phantom 3 battery here as well as a Phantom 4. And even though they're physically different and they've got different capacities, uh, pretty much everything I'm going to talk about today applies to both of these batteries. So it doesn't really matter if you're flying the P3 or P4, this would be a good clip to watch. Now before I get started, I just want to recommend that you download the manuals and read them, and I've got links below to do that. Now I'm not a big fan of reading manuals, I typically, if a new toy shows up, I want to rip open the box, throw a battery in it, and fly the thing. But in this case, I'd recommend you going through it because the manuals have a lot of really good information that's densely packed in there about the best way to charge these, how to discharge them, how to store them. Uh, and I would recommend you go through that. Even though I'm going to try and do my best to cover everything that's in the manuals in this clip, it's just always good to refer to that because the two things I worry about the most are safety. Obviously, it's a LiPo battery. There's all the challenges that come along with a LiPo battery around overheating and fire potential and things like that. But the second part, which is just as important to me, is this is a $160 accessory. So if I'm gonna drop that kind of coin on a product, I wanna make sure I get the most use possible out of it. And you can actually do things, unnatural things to these batteries that you don't even know you're damaging them. And what that'll do is instead of you getting this many flights out of it or this many charges out of it, you may get this many charges out of it, which means you're gonna to have to spend that $160 again for the next battery well before you should have if you took care of them. So I've learned the hard way a couple of times about not paying attention to the way I should be treating these batteries, and they've really shortened the life of the battery. So hopefully the tips and tricks I give you today will allow you to extend the life of this as far as possible. All right, so before we get started on the technical stuff, a couple of care and feeding rules. So the first thing is you want to take care of these batteries. You want to protect them in a couple of ways. You don't want to get them wet. you got to keep them dry. If you fly these in foggy conditions or you fly near the shore, especially if you're near the surf, um, you want to immediately take the battery out. I keep a hand towel with me. Dry the battery. Don't put it back in your case immediately unless you're using some kind of desiccant in the case. I leave it out, let it air dry, make sure that all the moisture is out of it before I store it for the night don't charge it right away. So if you bring it back from a foggy environment, drizzly snow, shoreline environment, make sure that it's dry before you charge it. Because again, when you charge this battery, that's probably the most aggressive time with the inrush of current against those lipo cells. You want to make sure they're happy before you start charging that battery. The second thing is you want to avoid physical damage. And that means DJI does a pretty good job of protecting this thing in this nice hard plastic case. But if the side gets gouged, and you penetrate the lipo cells internally, that's a potential for fire. If you ever look at your battery and you find that when you try to slide it in the drone, it's tight going in, it may have swollen a little bit, or if you notice a swelling on it, don't use that battery. That's an, a really good indication that the batteries are on their way out and they're damaged. And if you charge them, put them in the drone, there's, there's a chance there could be a fire from that. So if you see damaged cells, stay away from that. The last thing is storing these batteries. You have to be really careful that when you're not using the batteries, you store them in a slightly discharged state. Now, I typically will fly for the day, and when I expend the batteries, I put them back in my case once they're, you know, they're dry, and then let them sit about 30% to 50% charged. Never store your batteries fully charged for any length of time. Matter of fact, that's so important that the battery itself, because of the really wizardry intelligence they've got built into it, will discharge the battery over 10 days to about 65% of its, its potential capacity. So I would recommend again that I used to make the mistake that I would always, when I got home, charge all my batteries, put them back in the case so my drone was ready to fly the next time. Don't do that. Um, drain them, put them back in the case, let them sit drained, or at least partially drained. And then what I'll typically do is when I want to fly that day, that morning, I'll put all the batteries on the charger, charge them up, and go out and fly for the day. So just a healthy way to extend the battery life. Um, all right, so the next thing is the short circuit aspects of it. Uh, one thing that frustrated me about the Phantom 4 batteries as opposed to the Phantom 3, the Phantom 3 contacts were pretty well protected way up here in the hood. The Phantom 4 contacts are right on the bottom of the battery. So my worry is if I set this down, heaven forbid, on the ground or moist ground, um, I could create a short circuit there. If I put it on something metallic, I could short this battery. It. Now, I mentioned before that there's a controller card inside the battery. So this isn't just naked lipo cells that are bundled together. There are a bunch of high quality lipo cells in there. But in addition to that, they've got a charging circuit board up here that's sort of the brains of the battery. That's why they call it an intelligent flight battery. And that card will protect you. If you short out this battery, it'll shut off. There's a safety mechanism to shut off the current so it's not going to explode. But even still, if I get debris on these contacts by setting it down on a surface, that could interfere with the connectivity to the drone. So if I get fuzz in there or dirt, or if I somehow reduce the amount of contact because it got tarnished, 
and then I slide that inside the drone, I've now transferred that dirt inside my drone. So I recommend when you're using these batteries, obviously, you know, use them as you would normally, but when you're going to store them after they've been charged or after you've flown for the day, take a piece of electrical tape or masking tape and put it across the bottom. That way it protects the contacts from anything getting in there, any moisture or debris. Same thing here, put some tape along these contacts. Now, with the Phantom 4s, I've talked about this before, we actually sell this custom battery guard. I'm not here to sell you accessories, but I like this one a lot because it fits right in the bottom of the battery and it sticks in there. So with me, when I'm done for the day, I'll pull it out of the copter and I'll actually throw this on the bottom of it and then I'll store it for the afternoon and I'm sure that I'm not going to have any shorts. One other thing I like to use as well is like a, a LiPo safety bag, which is a fireproof bag that's got a very tough exterior. This is a great way to sort of put your batteries away for the day, or if you charge them and you don't have a case with you, you can throw them inside here and you can take them with you, and that way it's going to help you prevent that gouging of the side of the battery. This is a very tough material. It's very difficult to penetrate. It also guarantees that if, heaven forbid, something crazy happens to the battery and it starts smoking or overheating, it's contained inside the bag, which is going to minimize the damage that's out there. Now, I also use these battery bags when I'm charging, so if I'm going to charge the battery and I'm you know, in a room where I've got it on a charger, I'll put it inside the bag, leave the flap open, and actually charge the battery there. So, and again, I'm not trying to sell you accessories, but again, $160 accessory here, about eight bucks or 10 bucks for these guys. So for me, that investment is well worth it to protect this investment. Just my, my two cents on that. All right. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the way you charge these. Now, DJI talks about do not use the battery in temperatures outside of 40 degrees when it's cold or 100 degrees when it's hot. The closer you get to those two ends of the spectrum, though, the chemical behavior of the lipos changes. So even though they say 100 degrees, if it's 90 or 95, probably not a good idea to, cat to charge the battery or even operate the battery, certainly not store the battery at that temperature. And the same thing when it gets really cold. So I have friends that used to store these in their glove box, and then they'd come back, and the battery would be all swollen because the lipo cells were damaged. So you want to make sure that storage of these batteries is somewhere between I have 50 degrees, 70 degrees, 80 degrees, so pretty much room temperature you're in good shape. But the charging aspects of it are super critical because I know, like me, you're going to go out in the summers and the hot summers and the cold winters. Uh, what you'll find is that if this battery is close to those edge temperatures, even though you can charge it, it's not going to perform as well. So it may seem like it takes a full charge, but it won't last as long in the copter and you may have flaky results from your copter. So my recommendation is, let's talk about the hot side of it, for example. If you're flying in a hot environment and the drone's been up for 15, 20 minutes and you land the drone, don't pull the battery right out of the drone, bring it over the charger and slap it on. And I used to do that because I have a car charger. I used to pull the battery out, charge it while I was flying the next one. I would give it a good 15 minutes to calm down because the closer this is, to like an ambient room temperature, the better it's going to take the charge and the less damage you're going to do to the lipo cells. And that's true for the cold side of it as well. One other caution I found with the cold is that even though the battery says that it's got plenty of life in it, I've seen the reduction of that charge happen very, very quickly, especially when I pass that 60% mark. So if I get 70, 80%, I'm fine. It's reading correctly. If I get to 60%, I notice from 60 to 30, it goes very, very quickly. And I'm sure that's because of the cold. Because again, it's a chemical reaction inside there with the lipo cells. And they like that to be sort of a moderate temperature to behave correctly. So that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, the discharge of the batteries too. There's, there's a trick you can do with these batteries. Now, DJI talks about fully discharging the batteries or deep discharging the batteries every 20 flights or 30 flights. I do it about every 30 or 40 flights. The reason for that are a couple of things. Number one, I mentioned that this intelligent card inside here keeps track of the charging cycles and the discharge cycles and the current delivered. It also keeps track of the individual lipo cells. So if you bring up the DJI Go application, you can see how those lipo cells are balanced. And what will happen sometimes is if you charge this, especially if you try to charge it when it's hot or too cold, some of those cells will fully charge, and then the charging circuit shuts off, and the others may be at 70 or 80 percent. So if you look in that application, and you've got a, a mismatch or an imbalance between those cells, the only way to correct for that is to deep discharge the battery. And the way I do it typically is I'll fly the drone until I get down to a very low percentage, I'll land the drone, turn off the rotors, and let it sit there until the battery blinks out. Now some people say they keep the rotors rolling, they'll sit it on the ground and let the rotors roll. I don't like doing that because the drone itself, the process of flying is part of the cooling mechanism for the drone, and if I'm just running the rotors on the ground, it's going to overheat. I need it up in the air to actually cool it off. So my recommendation would be fly it to 15 or 20 percent left, like hover it, land it, turn it off, and let the rest of the battery drain naturally. Now, I've had a couple of questions from people saying, we've seen these devices online that you can hook your battery up to, and it's got some kind of like Frankenstein setup where they've got a halogen light on one end, and it drains the battery. Now, I don't know if they work or not, but I always worry that I'm taking a $160 battery and connecting it to a $20 device to drain it. 
And the drain profile of the amount of current it's going to draw to light up that halogen light is different than what the drone asks for. So I always worry that I'm going to damage it by excessive current coming out of it. So my recommendation is I'm not in a hurry. If I have to deep discharge the cycle on this thing, I'll do what I said. I'll land the drone, let it sit there for a little while. I'll come out a few minutes later and it'll be blinked out and you're good to go. Now, the deep discharge on this is something else I get a lot of questions on. People that use standard lipo cells, like on a drone that doesn't have an intelligent uh, battery in it, and they're just naked lipo cells, they'll tell you never let the lipo cell go completely dead, because it's extremely difficult, almost impossible in some cases, to revive the lipo cell once you've pulled all the current out of it. This is different. So the intelligent card that's in there, when you drain this to where it blinks out, there's still 10 or 15% of the battery potential inside there, and, and you're not actually draining it all the way. What that does is it drains it down far enough where it resets all the counters and then once you fully charge it again they all start equal and come up from zero. So when you do the deep to discharge cycle to it make sure you're in the house and you've got ambient temperature when you're doing it but that will balance out your cells to give you again the best life out of it but more importantly is it may correct for a lot of error conditions that you get on the battery so just something to keep track of. Alright so three other things I want to talk about are the indicators on the front and what these indicators mean for you. So everybody knows that if you need to know how much power is left in the battery you tap it once and you can read the bars across. Each of these bars are 25 percent of capacity. So in this case I've got 100 percent capacity. I just charged that. This is the Phantom 3 I was out flying with earlier today. If I hit that I've got two bars and one blinking and there's a chart up here that tells you exactly what that means. But 25, 50, probably between 60 and 70 percent charged. It's not quite fully 75 percent charged. So a real quick way to tell at a glance how your batteries are doing. I love that because if they're in my case I can hit the buttons on all of them and see which ones need charging and which ones are fully charged. So pretty straightforward. The second function of that button is to tell how many times you can still charge this battery over the life of the cell. So when I said before that the internals keep track of how many times it's been charged, there's a finite number of times you can charge a LiPo cell like this. So you can go into the DJI Go app and it'll tell you how many times it's been charged, but you can also tell from the front button. So, and, and there's a chart up here that'll tell you what these indicators are, but if you, instead of pushing it and letting go, if you push it and hold it, until you see the circle blink. It takes about five seconds, I think, something like that. Once that circle starts blinking, if you let go, you can read how much left there is of the life of the battery, the useful life of the battery. Now, in this case, they're all lit up because it's a pretty new battery. I think I've only charged it 25 or 30 times, so I've got a long life ahead of me with this battery. But if I did that and I've only got two blinking, that means I've used half of the recycle or the recharge cycles of the battery. So you know that you've got an older battery there. And that's something I like to do if I'm buying a used drone, because every now and then I'll pick up a used drone and I'll always ask them how often have you flown it, how much has it been flown, and you know I'll, I'll use that trick on the battery to look at it, because if he tells me or she tells me I've only flown it a bunch of times and I do that and we're down to two bars, I know that battery's been used an awful lot and the only way that battery could have been used is in that drone. So it's a good way to sort of keep them honest. But you know if you're buying a used drone, you want to make sure that the resources that you're buying are, are at least have some life left in them. Um, all right, the last thing I want to talk about with the indicators is the fault conditions because every now and then you're going to get a, a wonky problem with the battery and it may happen where you've kept it in the car overnight and it got too cold or too hot maybe you forgot and it was in the back seat or you've used some Chinese knockoff charger that kind of charged it incorrectly uh, and the battery will come up with an error condition. Now this chart will tell you what those error conditions are and some of those are pretty easy to clear. They may just be a matter of resetting the drone or resetting the battery. Some of them are persistent. They're very difficult to get rid of. And one trick you can do to try to get rid of the majority of those errors is that deep discharge trick I talked about a minute ago. If you have some of those errors on your battery and you've tried all the obvious stuff to correct it, I would recommend doing a deep discharge on the battery at room temperature, letting it sit for a couple of minutes after the discharge takes, and then putting it on the charger, an official charger, to recharge the battery to 100%. Every time I've had a battery fault, that's corrected the battery fault for me. Now, there are conditions where maybe there's a short that you can't correct for, and that's going to come up as a battery fault. You definitely want to inspect the end here with a magnifying glass and a flashlight to see if maybe something got in there that's shorting out some of the contacts. There are a couple of ways you can go through that, but I like the, the fact that they give me um, troubleshooting information through these indicators in the front of the battery. So, again, consult that chart. And these are all in the manuals I talked about before, but I put them up here just to make it easier. So that's all I really had. The only other thing I wanted to mention at the end of this is the DJI Go app has a phenomenal amount of information available to you. If you bring up that battery tab inside that application, it shows you visually, and here's a screenshot of it, how your batteries are balanced, how many times it's been charged, how much life there is in the battery, how much of a charge there is in the battery. So tons of really good 
um, information in there about how your battery health is going, and that's the exact same information that the drone's going to need once you plug this into your drone to calculate how far it can go and when it has to return to home and all the rest of the good stuff that the drone needs to know. So every now and then check that application. I typically do it the first time I put the battery in for the day. So if I'm flying with three batteries, Every time I swap out a battery, I'll go to the battery tab and check it to make sure that I've got equal across all the cells and that I'm ready to fly and everything's ex as I expect it to be. So anyway, that's it for today. I hope this clip was helpful for you. I really enjoy doing these, and these are things that I struggle with on a regular basis, so I figure by doing clips, maybe I'm helping other people get past these, these kind of humps in the road, if you will. If you have questions about this, please leave them below. If there's a subject you'd le like to see us do a clip on too, just shoot me a note and we'll do what we can to get a clip together for you. Um, we always appreciate comments, positive and negative. Don't be too rough on us. And if you're not subscribed today, please subscribe to the channel. We have a ton more clips coming on both the Phantom Series, the Mavic, the Karma. A lot of other cool products are coming out that we're going to be doing a ton of clips on. So again, thanks an awful lot for all your support in the channel. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you soon. Happy droning.